Hey, folks! Who am I kidding? There's nothing scarier than the way the Leafs are playing of late. We're going to break all this do ghoulish rot down for you right here on the Ozone. You're in the offensive zone. Your place for Leafs hockey. Hey folks, welcome to the Ozone. That's Cody. That's Katie, and I'm the Devo. We're here to talk all things Leafs. Listen, hit subscribe, ring the bell. You won't miss any content. You don't want to miss any content. Like and share the video helps us spread the audience. Get your friends on here too. And then, of course, you and your friends can comment on the videos. We'll get you on the pod. We listen. We take it seriously. It helps guide the content. Okay, the Leafs are floundering. That's no secret. So, hey, let's get the boys out of Toronto, right? Yeah, we'll go down to California. We'll beat up on the Kings, maybe smack the Ducks around, right? Nope. No, sir. Four-game losing streak, folks. Uh, haven't won since Winnipeg. It's, uh, seems remarkable. Seems a long time ago. Uh, which coincidentally marks the last and only time this season the Leafs have scored four goals in a contest. That uh, gives you a little bit of an indication of what is ailing this team. They just can't seem to score. The fan base is frothy. Uh, Justin Hall, uh, his name's being dragged through the mud. The Stars, Marner, last game. Goodness gracious. Okay, KD, what do you make of all this? Yeah, so we're going to talk, I'll, you know, coach is going to talk maybe high level a little more than, than I will. I'll talk a little bit more of the details. Uh, what we're, we're seeing is a dysfunctional team, absolutely. You know, they're not supporting the puck at all. And I mean, I spent most of my hockey career as a forward, and I always hated when the puck wasn't around, when the puck was you know coming late, and, and when we got the suicide pass and stuff. Until I got a little bit older and played a bit of men's league, and I went and played back on, on defense, I realized... Most of the time for those bad passes because of the forwards. You're in a bad position. You're way too far up. You're not, again, supporting the puck. You're not communicating. And, you know, much maligned are the Leafs, D. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're not playing crappy hockey. They are. However, we don't have a lot of high-end offensive D on this team. And we have forwards who are just not available at all. Not only are they not available on the way up and not supporting the puck and way too high most of the time, their back check is atrocious. The structure on their back check and the work in their own end is as bad as it, I think it, I've seen it in a while. People missing guys, people chasing the puck, uh, three on fives turning into scoring chances. Like it's just, it just uh, sort of appalling. I mean, I, try, I took a bunch of clips. I was going to show a few things, but it's happening every second shift. There's just so many breakdowns. At the end of the day, the lines have to start sitting down on the bench. When I played, I sat down beside my line mates and we talked the whole game. And if it wasn't working early, we sorted it out. They've got to support the puck. That means you've got to be closer to the guy, your teammate, who's got the puck so that the passes are shorter, they're quicker, and you move as a unit. Right now, they're a disjointed team. Uh, they're easily separated. Even the top lines, they're they're getting in trouble, and they, you have to play as a team. This 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 game is five on five, and and the best five on five team generally wins. So you need they need to they need to pull it together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, coach, it's a bit it is a bit deflating. I have to say, I, I know that comparatively, the Leafs started last season pretty slow as well. Really shaky, and a lot of the same problems. Matthews was hurt, so obviously he wasn't. Uh, there was no production there out of him. Hall was awful at this time last year, too, folks. If you go back and look at some of our very early videos last year, we were dragging him around a little bit, and rightfully so. He also looked like he was a little bit off, like he might have just been coming off of some long COVID or something like that. But uh, I don't know. You look at the blender that Leafs got these lines in now. Um, it's madness. Obviously, there's a little bit of desperation going on. So uh, let me ask you this. What is the temperature right now with the team, with with everything, with the coach, with MLSE? What is the temperature going on right now? Temperature? Temperature? Let me start with volume. Here's what the volume is right now. Here's my good buddy Shrek to fill you in. 
It's quiet. Too quiet. Yeah. Okay, so like Shrek says, it's quiet. Too quiet. Um, <laughs> Keith is hanging. He's hanging by a thread, right? He's out there. There's nobody with him. They're out in California. Toronto media travels. They're all, all, all over him. Yep. And he's got to ask, he's got to answer questions about his job. They asked Dubas to comment, and he said, no comment. This was today, uh, Halloween day. That's not saying anything. Shanahan's not saying anything. He's twisting in the wind, fellas. It's quiet. It's too quiet. The yep. temperature is, is higher than last year. It's higher than normal. And here's why. Yes, the records are similar, but something is definitely different. And Keith knows it. Here's what's different. Last year was a post-COVID year. Remember, we were in the North Division. That division was garbage. We won that division and then suffered that horrendous loss to Montreal. So you don't really know how you're going to compete post-COVID with the, the full NHL back in the Atlantic, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> also, uh, they got off to a slow start, but the top four in the Atlantic was set. It was pretty well set. The bottom of that division was horrendous, right? Mm -hmm. So you knew you were battling for position with Boston, Tampa, Florida. There wasn't that kind of urgency. But also, you know, his sole focus, Keith's sole focus last year, wasn't so much the regular season, even though they had a great one. It was to win a round, and he did not do it. And yep. you know he had to be told, look, you lost Montreal series. We did. You got one more chance, and he didn't do it. So there's a lot more urgency for him. And you can tell by the way he's managed this year. He had no desperation last year at this time. Here's what he's done so far. He called out the effort of the club. Game one, called out their lack of preparation against bad teams. He's called out the stars. He's apologized for calling out the stars. He snapped in practice. He's changed the lines, as you just said, Devo. Oh, yep. and he benched a star. He benched Marner. That's risky. He has no more bullets to fire, guys. Oh, and I would argue he benched the wrong guy. How about Matthews coming back that first goal against San Jose? Lottie da that's his guy that scored. But he doesn't dare go against Matthews. He went with Marner. Marner's going to be sore about it. I don't know, man. Um, it, it is different, and it's real. And, and yes, the Toronto media machine makes things much bigger than they need to be. But there's something here, guys, where there's smoke. I think there's fire right now. Yeah, I, I I tend to agree with you. I, I don't think it's comparable this year to last year. I don't think there was near this desperation last year. Uh, and also, let's remember, Matthews wasn't playing. So there was sort of a built-in excuse, right? Um, uh, the team actually had better underlying uh, offensive numbers last year. Uh, they, weren't, they had a terrible shooting percentage through, I think, uh, the 10 games or 11 games. But uh, that obviously t turned around. Uh, shortly after that, they had one hell of a November. Maybe we have the same thing starting tomorrow. Maybe we just need to skip October every year and just go right to November. But <laughs> I guess we'll see. But here's, I know this is a loaded question. It won't be an easy, easy one. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask it in two different ways. What currently that's ailing this team is fixable, and what are some quick wins that that someone like Keith could could get to to turn this around kd well a little bit of what i talked about just before like so let's start playing every shift well they're not scoring goals and that's fine whatever but they've gone from not scoring goals in the first few games and playing okay and getting chances to now deteriorating where now it's kind of a, a dog's breakfast out there so one they need to play better in their own end like just start covering the guys without the puck like it's it just it's simple you know, legitimate hockey that we all know how to play from the time we're eight years old up. Um, I think what you want to also try and do is, um, you know, you got to, I think, simplify it on the back end. Like, I know it's a possession team and I know they're looking to do a lot of stuff, but I think you got to bring the forwards back more. If you take a look at a guy like Justin Hall, who has, by the way, at this stage, absolutely no confidence. But the one time he does is actually killing penalties. He's still an above average penalty killer. You know, you put him out there and, and he does that quite well. 
Why? Because it's simplified. He's got two or three jobs to do and he does them. He knows exactly where he's supposed to go. So what you want to try and do is simplify him. Maybe you need to stick, um, you know, stick Brody on his line. Uh, maybe you kind of limit the minutes a little bit. And, and sure enough, what you try and do is bring the forwards back. Force the, everyone to stay in the zone. Make those passes quick. If you look at almost every pass by the Leafs D, is would be a two-line pass if the red line was in play. Almost every one. There's virtually no passes that are less than two lines. That, that's got to change. And you'll, you, even if they get going again, which they won't do in that, that is so easy to defend in, in the, that league. You have to have speed coming out of your zone, and you only get it by coming back deeper. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. And it, it's one of those things. It, it, things feed other things. Uh, the, the, the Leafs' p- underlying possession numbers are are considerably weaker than what the standard has been over the past couple of years. Now, hear me out here. If you look at the, I think it was the first goal in the Ducks game, uh, or the it was the power play goal. It was a long pass up, right up the middle of the ice. Boom, pass over, give and go. Uh, beat the goalie on a actually a weak shot. Um, but it was a bang, 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 bang play. Very fast, long pass. Um, the Leafs also used to get a lot of those potential plays when you had the other team on a two-minute shift and they were doing the long change and just sucking air and getting off the ice and you're dictating play. But when you're not, and you're mostly hemmed in your own end, and that first line has been, he- for the entire Western trip, they've been hemmed in their own end. You can't have these long passes. I completely agree. Coach, uh, can this be righted as it is? Or like, does a major change need to come in order to get this back on track? Fellas, you know my answer. This is a layup. <laughs> I have been saying this since episode 66, Okay. Episode 66 was the aftermath of the Tampa series. And I probably was saying it before then. A major change is required. A major change, in my opinion, was required after the Montreal series. Didn't happen. Okay. You want to run it back one more time. That was a fluke series that Dominic Ducharme outcoaches us on. Okay. We run it back. Ran it back. Didn't win again. Changes needed to be made. So you know my answer. And look. There's a few things that need to change, in my opinion. First, well, the easiest thing to do is to change the head coach. And, you know, I think I said last week on the pod, I think that happens Thursday. I think if they struggle against Philadelphia, that's going to happen. So I do have that. Now, people will say, well, he's lost the room. How could anyone possibly know if he ever had the room and when he lost it? We don't know what's going on in there. But we sure as hell know what the on-ice product looks like. It's disjointed. It's tough to watch. They haven't put together really like a full period, much less a full game. So that's part of that at least is preparation, right? And he's not there. The, the, The coach is not there with that. I think the bigger but more needed fix is with the roster. We're talking about this like we got to save the regular season. What's the elephant in the room? The roster is not constructed to win playoff series. We all know it. We're putting it aside for now, but it isn't. We're content to be on the periphery. You know, that San Jose game I went to, I sat behind the net. So you get a really good view of how we attack and how we're content to be on the outside. And Kev, also, what the D are looking at, it's stagnant in the neutral zone. Basically, you got to fire it at a guy, hope he tips it in. That's no way to play. And look, you know, because the roster's top heavy up front, what are you going to do? All the money is tied up. There's no hidden gems. Cali Yarncroc is not a hidden gem. Okay, so you need league leading production out of your stars because of the way this roster is constructed. And when you don't get it, this is what we see. And then the last part of it is I've been railing on this forever. Since the trade deadline last year, the D is lopsided. It's more left, like I said, than Canada's politics. There's one guy right now that shoots right. That has to be addressed too. But so look, that's, I think, the change needs to be made. But I will say this. I don't think this current GM has the stones. I don't think he has the onions to make the needed changes. I think he loves this roster and he's ride or die with it. So he has to go too. And I think that has to be the first domino along with the coach. 
I would have Shanahan step in as interim and find a, a replacement GM as soon as possible. And then that guy can hire his own coach. The guy I would hire is this guy in this little clip here. The hour of 6 a.m. in the big monster city. Temperature is a balmy 65 degrees, which is good news for you reptiles. And it looks like it's going to be a perfect day to maybe, hey, just lie in bed, sleep in, or simply work out that slab that's hanging over the bed. Get up, Sully. <laughs> I don't believe I ordered a wake-up call, Mikey. Hey, let's talk more pain, Marshmallow Boy. Ah! Feel the burn. Ah! You call yourself a monster? Ah! Scary feet, scary feet, scary feet. Oh, the kids away. Okay, scary feet, scary feet, scary feet, scary feet, scary feet. Kids asleep. Ah! Quick. <laughs> okay, and if Mike Wazowski is not available, let's go get Barry Trotz. We got to get this thing on the, on the back on track here, fellas. Yeah, I I, uh, I don't disagree. You say Thursday, Coach, but you also mentioned before earlier on, and I just want to make sure there's some nuance in this pod for some of the uh, some of our subscribers. It's quiet out there in Leafland, a little too quiet, mm-hmm. and uh, something might actually be in the works. And if it is, you come home from a bad road trip, maybe you get your walking papers, maybe we get an announcement tomorrow. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, Mr. Trotz did say an original six. That could be something I would uh, seriously consider. Anyways, there you have it, folks. It might be Halloween. It might be the time of the evil spirit, but we're not here. You're safe here in the Ozone. We'll take care of you. We'll turn this around right here on the Ozone.